on CBS2. The home of the NCAA Basketball Championship, CBS Sports. Sports presentation of the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by the Big New Yorker Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Dumble in New York. At long last, the time has come to stop guessing and to start filling in your brackets. Welcome to the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show in this CBS Sports 18th consecutive year covering the emotion, the magic, and the madness of the NCAA Men's College Basketball Tournament. Joining me tonight, as he will throughout March Madness, is Clark Kellogg. Hey, I got my highlighter. I'm ready to put it to work. Let's go ahead and get these brackets out. Got me highlighted all over my knee. Also joining us will be Jim Nance and Billy Packer. They are in Chicago, where earlier today they broadcast the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Now, here is how the NCAA tournament regions line up this year. The East and Midwest winners will square off in one national semifinal, the South and the West winners in the other. And then the two finalists will play for the national title. CBS Sports will cover all 63 NCAA tournament games, culminating in the national championship in prime time on Monday night, the 29th of March at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. Right now, it's time to unveil the four number one seeds in the tournament, as well as the pairings in the East Regional. For that, we go live to Kansas City and our colleague, Michelle Tafoya. Michelle. Greg, thanks very much. Let's get right to it. Let's start with the number one seeds in each region, beginning with the East, and it is Duke, the Blue Devils. Mike Krzyzewski making his 15th appearance with a team powered by National Player of the Year candidate Elton Brand. In the Midwest, Michigan State, Tom Izzo coached the Spartans to a Big Ten championship fueled by co-Big Ten Player of the Year, Mateen Cleaves. In the South, the Auburn Tigers, Cliff Ellis is at the helm of perhaps the most surprising team of the season, led by SEC Player of the Year, Chris Porter. And in the West, Connecticut, Jim Calhoun's Huskies are Big East champions, and Richard Rip Hamilton is co-Big East Player of the Year. And to the brackets now, we begin in the East with teams who will go to Charlotte for Friday Sunday games. The Duke Blue Devils take on Florida A&M. The Rattlers of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference come in with the worst record at 12 and 18. College of Charleston in their first season in the Southern Conference, the Cougars didn't lose a single league game. They'll play Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane, out of the whack. Wisconsin, the Badgers lost six of their last nine. They'll take on Southwest Missouri State. The Bears get an at-large bid from the Missouri Valley Conference. Tennessee will try to win its first tournament game since 1983. They'll take on Delaware. The Fighting Blue Hens will represent the America East Conference. So there's a look at the top half of the East. Those games at the Charlotte Coliseum. Now to the bottom half of the East bracket. These will be Friday, Sunday games in Boston. Miami, the Hurricanes boast the Big East Coach of the Year in Leonard Hamilton and co-Big East Player of the Year Tim James. They'll play Lafayette. The Leopards are back in the tournament for the first time since 1957. Texas, the Longhorns rebounded from their 2-7 and seven start under new coach Rick Barnes. They'll play Purdue, the Boilermakers, in after dropping five of their last six. Cincinnati, the Bob Huggins Bearcats handed Duke its only loss of the season. They'll take on the George Mason Patriots of the Colonial Athletic Association. And Temple, it's the 10th straight visit for the Owls. They'll take on Kent of the Mid-American Conference. The Golden Flashes making their first NCAA appearance. So there's the bottom half of the East. Those games will be at the Fleet Center. And now we headed back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Michelle, thanks. So as we take a look at uh, the College of Charleston heading back to Charlotte, as we suggested, where that 25-game winning streak began, uh, what do you look at when you see the College of Charleston there, Clark? Well, that's a heck of a matchup with them in Tulsa, but they wanted to try to get a higher seed. They were hoping to avoid that eight seed where they end up most likely having to face Duke. All right, they're the number two seed. As for Southwest Missouri State, the number 12 seed, well, take a look at their reaction as they saw the brackets unfold, and they're headed for a matchup with Wisconsin. Wisconsin, very deliberate basketball team, but you love that drama and excitement for Southwest Missouri State. All right, meanwhile, now, the bottom half of the bracket, you'd see at the bottom there, Miami of Florida, number two seed. What do you see for them down the road? Well, looking down the road, there could be a very intriguing matchup between them and Cincinnati if the seeding holds true in terms of what happens on the court. And George Mason, how did they react as they saw their number come up? Ah, the Patriots are mighty happy, and they're headed for a matchup with Cincinnati. <laughs> Physical team, but nothing like being in the tournament. All right, Clark, we will return to Michelle in Kansas City for the Midwest bracket when the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show continues live here on CBS.
Time now for the Midwest region. We begin with the top half of the bracket, the Friday Sunday games at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Michigan State, the Spartans come in with their highest seed ever. They'll take on Mount St. Mary's. Jim Phelan became just the fourth coach ever to notch 800 wins when the Mountaineers won the Northeast Conference title. Villanova, the Wildcats, got a boost from their win over St. John's to finish the regular season. They'll play Ole Miss. The Rebels are 0-3 all-time in the tournament. UNC Charlotte, the 49ers, made a great run through the Conference USA tournament. They'll play Rhode Island, the surprise winner of the Atlantic 10. Arizona, the Wildcats, won their only national championship as a number four seed in 1997. They'll play Oklahoma. It's the fifth straight appearance for the Sooners. That is the top half of the Midwest in Milwaukee. Now to the bottom half. These are Friday, Sunday games in New Orleans. The Utah Utes, last year's runner-up, gets a number two seed. Coach Rick Majerus has never lost a first-round game. They'll play the Arkansas State Indians of the Sun Belt Conference in for the very first time. Washington, the Huskies will try to repeat last year's Sweet 16 run. They start out with Miami of Ohio. The Red Hawks will be carried by MAC Player of the Year, Wally Zerbiak. The Kentucky Wildcats, the defending champions, they are 17-1 in their last 18 tournament games. They'll play New Mexico State. The Aggies won the Big West Conference last night. Kansas, the Jayhawks haven't been seeded lower than five since 1988, when as a sixth seed, they won the national championship. They'll take on the Evansville Purple Aces. They get an at-large at bid out of the Missouri Valley Conference. So here is a look at the bottom half of the Midwest bracket. These teams go to the Louisiana Superdome. And now we're going to check in with Jim Nance and Billy Packer standing by in Chicago. All right, thank you, Michelle. Michigan State, Billy, certainly looked like a number one seed and a national title contender today by winning for the 18th straight time, winning the Big Ten tournament. And they are the number one seed in the Midwest in Milwaukee as we review this bracket. Villanova and Ole Miss in the 8-9 game. Look at UNC Charlotte moving up to a five. Moved up to a five, Jim, about two and a half weeks ago. They were wondering if they're even going to be in the tournament, would be on the bubble. Well, here they are, a five and a dangerous five. And Oklahoma has the worst seed of any at-large team, so you can deduce that had Illinois won today here in Chicago, Oklahoma would have been out. You're putting eight teams in the Big Ten in. We'll hear about that later. All right. Now, meanwhile, this is the bracket in New Orleans. Look at this possible second round matchup. It could be a historic battle. Kansas and Kentucky, they both won their conference tournaments today. They can meet in the second round. They really did. Kentucky a three there. That's kind of surprising in a way. And, and you get in a situation there where you have the number one winningest team of all time against number three all time mm. in a second round. Wow. Field. Unbelievable. Wow. What a match that could be. And how about the Washington Huskies? Just a split second away a year ago, and the Yukon Huskies beat them. And they will be taking on Miami of Ohio in the first round. You know what that means, Billy? Saw Wally Serbiak this summer, an outstanding basketball player. This is a team to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, Utah's also in that bracket in New Orleans. And for the fourth straight year, Rick Majerus's team is in the same end of the draw as Kentucky. Well, he hated to see Kentucky before, but this is the first time in the 90s he's been rated higher. All right, let's go back to Kansas City and back to you, Michelle. <laughs> South beginning with teams who will go to Indianapolis for Thursday Saturday game. So the top half of the South bracket Auburn SEC player of the year Chris Porter will lead the Tigers and they will take on Winthrop. The Eagles won the Big South Conference Championship to earn the school's first ever berth. Syracuse Big East Defensive Player of the Year Eton Thomas makes the Orangemen a tough draw for Oklahoma State but the Cowboys are riding the momentum of a great Big 12 tournament run. UCLA, the Bruins will be without freshman center Dan Gadzurek out with a knee injury. Baron Davis will play with a sprained right toe. They'll take on the Detroit Titans, the Midwestern Collegiate Conference champions. Ohio State, the Buckeyes went from last place in the Big Ten last year to almost first this year. They'll take on Murray State. The Racers won their third straight Ohio Valley Conference. That is the top half of the South bracket. Now to the bottom half, and these teams will go to Orlando for Thursday, Saturday games. Maryland at number two, the Terrace have their highest seed since 1980. They'll take on the Valparaiso Crusaders. Last year, Cinderella returns. Louisville, the Cardinals in after an historic, successful appeal of its postseason band. They'll take on Creighton. The Blue Jays come in as Missouri Valley Conference champions. St. John's, the Red Storm, earns its highest seed since they were number one in 1986. They'll take on the Samford Bulldogs, the Trans-America Athletic Conference champions, making their NCAA debut. Indiana, the Hoosiers, are one and four in the NCAA tournament in the last four seasons. They'll take on the George Washington Colonials featuring Atlantic 10 player of the year five foot four inch Shantae Rogers. Orlando Arena is the destination for the bottom half of the South. 
and we are three quarters of the way there. Right now, let's send it back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, thanks very much, Michelle. You know, as we look at that south bracket in Indianapolis, the first thing my partner says is, where is Ohio State? Where is that? Well, they're a number four seed in the south, and should they get past Murray State, and should number five UCLA get past Detroit, that makes for an interesting matchup. It really does, the potential of two of the best point guards in the country going head-to-head. -head. Easy track for the Buckeyes and their faithful to get over to Indianapolis. Now, talk about looking down the line as you look at the matchup in Orlando. If St. John's moves ahead, as does Georgia, George Washington, take a look at what you have there. You've got Mike Jar Jarvis, who just left George Washington, taking on this former school. If, in fact, that happens, it's dangerous to look ahead, but it's always fun to do so. But that's your job. Yeah, that's right. what you that's do. Part of it. This reminder for you be sure to go online tonight at 8 30 Eastern Time to chat live with our own Clark Kellogg. He'll go over the brackets and answer your questions about them at cbs.sportsline.com or for America Online users, enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. We have three quarters of our bracket sheet filled out. Michelle Tafoya will give us the pairings in the West as you take a live look at the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, who still await news of their fate. Will their bubble burst or will they play in the West? We'll find out when we go back live to Kansas City right after this. Welcome back. Time for the final bracket. To the west we go. We start with the top half of the bracket. These games to be played in Denver, Connecticut. This is the third number one seed in the 90s for the Huskies, but they've never advanced to the final four. They'll play Texas San Antonio, the Southland Conference champs. Missouri, this was the Tigers' best season since they won the Big 8 in 1993-94. They'll play New Mexico. A strong whack tournament run gives the Lobos a number nine seed. Iowa, it's the last time Tom Davis will lead the Hawkeyes into the tournament. They'll face UAB. It's the first tournament appearance for Blazers coach Murray Bartow. Arkansas, thanks to a nice run in the SEC tourney, the Razorbacks wind up with a number four seed. They'll take on the Siena Saints. And file this, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference champs are the nation's number one free throw shooting team. So this is the top half of the West Thursday, Saturday games at McNichols Arena. Now down to the last eight teams, the bottom half of the West to be played in Seattle at Key Arena, a Thursday, Saturday schedule. Stanford, the Cardinal is sporting its highest seed ever as they try to return to the Final Four. They take on the Alcorn State Braves, champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Minnesota, the Golden Gophers, will take on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. The West Coast Conference champs have won 25 games this season, most in school history. North Carolina, the Tar Heels earn their 25th straight bid. That's the longest streak ever. They'll take on the Weber State Wildcats, who come in as the Big Sky Conference champions. And the Florida Gators, Coach Billy Donovan making his first NCAA appearance. They'll take on the Penn Quakers, winners of the Ivy League champion. There are the eight teams heading to Seattle, and that completes the field of 64. We head back now to Chicago and Jim Nance and Billy Packer. All right, thank you, Michelle. There are some broken hearts out there right now, but how about UConn heading west? What do you think of that? I think it's a good move for them. You remember the last time they went west this year, they took on Stanford out there, and Jim, I, I think it really helps this basketball team. They don't want to, you know, the Meadowlands where they've had some heartbreak. Well, and how about New Mexico? Some thought they were on the bubble. They actually merited a number nine seed. And the Siena Saints are in. They're going west, Billy. They'll take on Arkansas in the first round out in Denver. And you like Sienna. Yes, I do like them. I think they're one of the sleeper teams in the early round. All right, let's move now to Seattle in the West bracket. And check it out. North Carolina travels west to take on Weber State. And there's Gonzaga, a 10, and Stanford. Stanford and UConn. They met earlier in the year at Stanford. UConn beat them. They're in the same bracket out west. And Gonzaga, another one of those sleeper teams, Jim. All right, Billy, let's take a look now at the Sweet 16 seeds and how they break down and try to forecast for me which one you think is the toughest bracket, maybe the upset bracket. First thing, though, look at the East. Miami gets the two seed in the East, which means if they get to the Sweet 16, they go to the Meadowlands. But it's not St. John's going there. Yeah, look what happened to St. John's. Even though they beat Miami, maybe it was the game against Connecticut that hurt them right there. I think without question, though, Jim, the toughest region is the Midwest. Look at that. Michigan State, a champ. Utah, a champ. Kentucky, a champ. Arizona uh, playing very 
very, very well. And then you take a look at the South. Auburn, Maryland, St. John's, and Ohio State. Not one team there is the conference champion. What stands out uh, as far as the top four seeds in the West for you? UConn, Stanford, North Carolina, Arkansas. Well, I think that Connecticut uh, and Stanford, Connecticut really has their number, and uh, and I think that that's got to be something that uh, they would look forward to. And also the fact that Arkansas plays the same kind of up-tempo game. I think this is probably Jim Calhoun's best-looking situation. Let's break down the conferences, Billy, and the Big Ten leads the way with seven, and the worst seed out of the Big Ten, Purdue, a 10, which means had Illinois won today, they likely would have been the first conference ever to put eight into the tournament. But what else strikes you here? Hard to believe. Well, the thing that jumps out at you more than anything, of course, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people angry down in the ACC territory. They only got three teams in. As you can see, Conference USA with four teams, Pac-10 with four. I think the ACC is the one that probably is the most uh, disconcerting for fans in their area. They've got the best record in NCAA play of any of the conferences. Who would have thought the Missouri Valley would put as many teams in as the ACC? All right, the bubble was burst for these teams just moments ago, including Xavier and Rutgers. We saw Rutgers waiting word. Kevin Bannon's team left on the outside with an 18 and 12 record. And Xavier's 21 and 10 mark, not good enough to get in. Well, the Atlantic 10 got three teams in. Xavier had that chance in the conference tournament, didn't get it done. All right, Billy. You're going to be talking with CM Newton, the chair of the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee. We'll continue on the road to the Final Four on CBS in just a moment. One correction, Florida is a six seed, a number six seed. And joining us now live from Kansas City is C.M. Newton, chair of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee and director of athletics at the University of Kentucky. And joining us again from Chicago is Billy Packer, celebrating his 25th year of broadcasting the NCAA tournament. Billy, I do believe you have a few questions for the chair. Well, CM, I watched you yesterday on the screen from here in Big Ten country, and you seem so calm and relaxed. What happened on Saturday with all of those upsets? <clears throat> oh, goodness, Billy. We were calm and relaxed uh, yesterday afternoon, and then uh, a lot of things happened. Some upsets occurred, and um, we were, frankly, we worked very late into the, the night last night uh, to try to get this, uh, this field uh, not only uh, selected, but get them seated and bracketed, and we, we, had a, we had a good run at it. Well, Sam, I want to start right off with the four number one seeds. A lot of people wondering uh, who was going to get them. We, and, and I understand that you see the one, two, three, four with Duke, Connecticut, Michigan State, Auburn in that particular order. Why does uh, Connecticut get moved? Well, the, the reason is is because Duke is the number one seed. You know, we, we do an S-curve uh, for the um, top four lines and the bottom four lines. And, and Duke came out. NCAA tournament gets underway with first round games on Thursday and Friday. Our CBS Sports exclusive coverage begins each day at noon Eastern time with the opening tip offs slated for approximately a quarter past the hour. On Thursday and Friday evenings, primetime coverage will begin at 7.30 Eastern right here on the exclusive home of the NCAA tournament, CBS Sports. Thank you for watching everyone. We hope you have a good evening and we will look for you on Thursday when the madness officially begins.